the NBC Symphony Orchestra, directed by Arturo Toscanini. That recording made December 13th, 1953, in Carnegie Hall. That was an NBC broadcast that day. Music of Mendelssohn is Symphony No. 5, the Reformation Symphony. It's 1.33. This is Classic New York, WNYC, 93.9 FM. October 1991. Dear Jake, Your mother and I certainly knew that you had some gay properties. But as you said, until it comes into the open, c'est la vie. Hindsight again. You should have talked with us, and we should have talked to you. But we didn't. Some years ago. So years ago? Fifty, fifty years ago. <laughs> Fifty years ago, it would have been a shameful thing for our family. But today, nobody thinks a thing of it. We are all different, and there is nothing bad about being gay. Too bad you had to worry all those years. You should have known your mother and father would stand behind you no matter what. Grandmother Mellon was just like that. Worry herself sick time after time. Don't forget to come home if you get a chance. We shall always be glad to see you. Love, Mom and Dad. <laughs> That's my um, father. And uh, he wrote this letter to me um, after I came out to him, or I came out to the whole family, actually. And um, <laughs> it's funny, um, but I haven't read this letter in a long time. And my father, he was a veterinarian, and his handwriting is really, really messy, so it's, it's kind of hard to read. But it, it's an interesting document, all the same. You know, now, I, I wish I could write a letter to him. But, you know, he died, you know, shortly after writing this letter to me. I, I guess that's why I'm making this film. When I was 10 years old, I used to play Little League, and I was in love with the shortstop, and his name was Tommy. And he didn't play on my team, but he was in my class in elementary school. And I can remember one time that he was playing and I wasn't, and my family wasn't around for some reason. And so I decided to just walk there. And the playing field, the baseball diamond, was, I'd say, three or four miles from my house. So here I am, you know, 10 years old, and just like <laughs> walking along the road, doodly do, <laughs> going to see this boy play, and I was like totally infatuated and everything like that. And so I go, and I sit in the bleachers, and I watch him play, and the game's over, and it's getting dark, and <laughs> so I gotta walk home, right? So I'm walking along the road, and, you know, Luckily, friends of my family, you know, pulled over in their station wagon. They're like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm just like walking home. They're like, well, get in. We'll give you a ride. And I was like, oh, okay. 
And it was just like, I went and saw Tommy play and I didn't even talk to him or anything. You know, I was just like high off that euphoria of like seeing my man play, you know, and I had this whole fantasy like played out in my head, like, you know, we were married and <laughs> to get a ride home was just like a bonus, you know. <laughs> This is the last time I am telling this story. Because you know what? I don't see what's so funny about it. Anyways, it was the last year that I went up on the duck hunting trip. And I guess I was 15. And my sister and my father and I went up. And we set up camp. And the following day, my brothers came up. And we were sitting around having dinner. Now you see, my father, he was colorblind. And the only real, real color he could see was red, and everything else was just gray to him. And he also had hypertension, and he kept his medication in this like bright green duffel bag. Well, we're sitting around the dinner table, and my father's like, Jake, get me the brown satchel. So I kind of just reach over without thinking about it, and I grab this like bright Kelly Green duffel bag and I toss it to him and my brother just kind of looks you know real funny like and he starts laughing really hard and he's just like he's like beard he's like that's not brown that's bright green <laughs> my father's like I don't care what color it is Jake knows what I need and <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's the story but my brothers love it and I have to hear it all the time whenever I go home October 1996 Dear Beard, I don't know if you knew it at the time, but when I was 14 years old and entering high school, my best friend Miles told me that he no longer wanted to be my friend. And the reason being, I found out later on, was that he was getting beat up because our relationship, his and mine, was construed as homosexual. Luckily, I never got beat up, but the whole situation was pretty devastating nonetheless. That is when I began to investigate our relationship, to go on rounds with you to the farms after school and on Saturdays. I even wanted to go hunting with you just so I could be one of the boys. And what was so interesting about all this was that you became my friend when I needed one. At a time, especially when most teenagers are rebelling against their parents, I got to know you better. It was a rewarding experience for me to go on this duck hunting trip, to go camping, to be a part of the gang, to skip school, and to hang out with you. And although I feel ambivalent about hunting in general, I appreciate the time I was able to spend with you. I only wish you could see, or I only wish you could have been there, or I only wish you could read this letter. Love, your son, Ryan. 